Hello and welcome back to Excelsior. Today we are going to continue our series on text formulas. If you recall, we have covered text after earlier where we covered text after formula in detail. If you still haven't watched that video, you can find the link on the top right and in the description. Since we went into depth in our text after video and both of these functions are nearly similar, barring their purpose and result, we are going to keep this one brief. That is another reason for you to watch our video on text after if you haven't already. So without any more delay, let's get on with today's video. Just like text after, text before formula helps you extract text from a given string. If you have been working with Excel for long, you may be aware of the left, right and mid functions, which when used with search or find functions, they help to extract desired text after determining the position of the delimiter, which worked pretty similar to text before and text after, as in the manner that the left, right and mid functions extract text from the left, right and middle respectively, and text before and text after extract text before and after a delimiter respectively. Let me quickly give you an example. Earlier, if we had to extract first name from our cell A2, a string such as John space Smith, the space in between was our delimiter. But we didn't had a way to just mention the delimiter and be done with it. So, we had to use this formula. Now, I know some of you have been using this method to get the first names out of full names. They will be comfortable with this. But just for comparative analysis, consider this formula. Isn't that simple? If you are still not convinced, let me show you the formula for extracting last name if you wish to use left, right and mid functions. And as you are aware, using just the text after function with the delimiter gets you the last name easily without having to write this long nested formula. So enough of the history, let's get back to text before. The syntax for text before is text before text, comma delimiter, comma instance number, comma match mode, comma match end, comma if not found. Out of all these arguments, text and delimiter are mandatory and rest are all optional. Let's quickly go through all of them so we can move to examples to understand this function better. Text is the text to extract from. It can be a cell reference or the text itself. Delimiter is a character or substring before which you want to extract the data. Instance number is the instance of the delimiter from where to extract text. When a negative number is used, Excel starts from the end of your text. Match mode defines the delimiter's case sensitivity. When it's not mentioned, Excel takes it as zero, which means case sensitive and is the default setting. If it's mentioned as one, it's case insensitive. Match end. This argument treats the end of the text as delimiter. It's disabled by default. Now that we are done with the syntax, let's jump to more interesting stuff. The examples. To make it comparable, we are going to use the same examples as in text after, so we can not only understand text before, but we can also compare it against text after function. So let's begin. In this sheet, this time we are going to extract first names, which is pretty easy we use the most basic version of our text before function. Text before, for our text, we refer to cell with the names, in this case A2, and then for delimiter, we use a space between quotes, close brackets and done. Here we have our first names extracted in this column. Let's move on to another example. In this example, we have our names as last name, comma, space, first name. Some of you lot might be quite familiar with this format. So this time, our formula becomes text before, then for text, we refer to this cell, and since our delimiter is a comma and a space, we have to use them in double quotes. But if you think about it, it's actually comma before our last name is. So we can skip using space in our delimiter and only mention comma in double quotes, and here we go. We have our last names extracted. In this example, we have something of a list of school staff where it mentions the role and then the name. But if you look closely, there is an S with an apostrophe like here. 
principal's name. You might think that to extract the designation, we will have to use apostrophe S space name as our delimiter and you won't be wrong but we can simply use the apostrophe S as our delimiter or only apostrophe because if you think about it you just want the text before the apostrophe anything after that doesn't matter so simply use text before then reference our designation and name comma and then for delimiter we will use the apostrophe in double quotes and job done we have the designations this time, we have to extract full name from this text. As you can see, we have the last name, comma, first name, comma, age, comma, role. If we simply use the text before formula like we have done in the past examples, let's see what happens. So we simply use our standard formula, text before, our text is this cell here, and then we use comma and space as our delimiter, and we just get the last name. If only there was a way to modify our formula to get the text not from this comma, but this one. There is. Remember the instance number argument of text before formula? We can get the full name using that. Let me show you how. We are going to use text before, reference our cell here as text, then use our delimiter, which is a comma and a space in double quotes. And when we get to the instance number argument, we want full name, we count from back how many delimiters are used and here we have two. So for instance number argument, we are going to use minus two. Minus because we are counting from the back. Press enter and here we have our full names extracted from this string here. Sometimes you'll get data that is not so organized that all the delimiters are the same. Meaning you can have commas, hyphens, semicolons, colons and whatnot as your delimiter. No worries, text before has got your back here as well. And it might look like you will have to write a separate formula for all these delimiters, but that is not the case. We can write one single formula to cover all the delimiters used in this data. For your convenience, I have mentioned the delimiters here. Now let's start with the formula. We start with text before, use this cell as our text. And when we get to the delimiter argument, this time, since we wish to use all these delimiters, we are going to put them in curly brackets. So open curly brackets and then we are going to put all these delimiters in double quotes. You will also note that most of them have spaces after delimiter, but these two here, A14 and A15, don't have any spaces. But we don't have to do anything extra like we had to in text after video because we have to extract everything before the delimiter and not after. If the space was before the delimiter, then we may have to use trim function before our formula. So we continue with our delimiters. Comma in double quotes, then comma, semicolon in double quotes, comma, hyphen or dash in double quotes, comma, period or full stop in double quotes. Close curly brackets and close normal brackets and done. We have extracted all the data needed. Let's say instead of comma, semicolon, colon, hyphen and other plethora of options, someone decides to use an alphabet as a delimiter. Like in this case here, we have A as our delimiter. Not an issue, right? We can use this as a delimiter. So we write a standard formula, text before, and this is our text. And for delimiter, we use space and then A. Complete a formula and press enter and we have all these hash NA errors. That's because the delimiter is case sensitive by default. To override this and make a formula case insensitive, we're going to use the argument match mode. So we edit this formula, skip instance number, and in our match mode argument, we choose this option, case insensitive, which is mentioned as one. Close our brackets and we have our result. I know most of you may not get the same situation where names are separated by an alphabet, but you may get something like machine part numbers where the naming has a common alphabet that is used. This is going to come in real handy then. We know how to deal with multiple delimiters. We will know how to deal with any new delimiters and highlight them. But what if there is no delimiter? In this example here, we have names and age. In all cases, you'll notice a comma is delimiter barring A9 and A18. 
They just have names and no age. So, if we are going to use a standard formula, text before, text, and then use comma as our delimiter, we get hash NA error. Which is understandable because our formula didn't found this delimiter. In our last example, there was a different delimiter and we included them all in curly brackets to fix this. But in this case, we don't even have one. So, we use the match end argument to get around these limitations. In this situation where we have to extract the name, let's edit our formula and after delimiter, we skip all these options and go straight to match end and mention one here. Press enter and we have our name. Time and again, you will come across data which will have too many kinds of delimiters and just eyeballing may not be enough. Just like in our last example, we have taken the time to get all the delimiters and then wrote our formula accordingly. But that was only about 30 names. When there are hundreds, mistakes are bound to happen. Like in this case here, let's use the same formula from our last sheet and see what happens. So let's copy our formula and paste it here. And we have hash NA error in these last two. Why? Because they have delimiters different than what we had accounted for earlier. From here on, you have two options. Either you can add these two delimiters to your formula, or you can highlight them using the if not argument of our text before formula. We make a small adjustment to our formula. After the delimiters, we skip the instance number, match mode and match end arguments. And when we get to the if not found argument, we mention, let's say, new delimiter in double quotes and complete our formula. Now we get rid of that pesky hash NA error. With this, we come to the end of our video for the day. See you in our next video on Friday with some other function or some other problem solving tutorial. We still have text join and text split in this series. I hope you found this video helpful and you are going to like, share and subscribe. If you don't, feel free to leave a comment about your feedback. See you in the next one, hopefully. Until then, happy spreadsheeting.